Would you pray with me? Lord Jesus, we come to you. For to whom shall we go? You alone have the words of eternal life, and we have believed and have come to know that you are the Holy One of God. Fill our hearts with your words. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. What a challenging week it has been pondering how to admonish a sinner. The Lord showed up right on cue early in the week for me. I was about to wag my finger at somebody who was about to do something that they and I knew they shouldn't do. And almost as quickly as I lifted my hand, the words came out of their mouth, but I bet you never struggled with that. And I was caught, red-handed, literally. I had to put the finger back down, and I had to go to the Lord quickly and ask for forgiveness because I was about to admonish somebody without understanding my own sin, without understanding God's mercy, and without seeing myself in their situation. Now, if you've read the, the, the two essays that we had in last week's Our Life together, maybe, just maybe, because my heart was my heartstrings were tugged with both of those articles with both of those essays especially the first one this man who calls this this dorm room unwittingly getting not only a a, a college student with an attitude but a bunch of her friends and with all sincerity sharing the love of Jesus that was in his heart and and how just doing that was enough to admonish a sinner. That the finger wagging, the pointing was not required. That, that the only thing that was required was his testimony. His testimony of his own brokenness. His testimony of God's mercy and God's forgiveness. And his testimony of, isn't it wonderful that we share this together? In other words, trying to reach out to somebody with that love and that mercy and that forgiveness. In fact, I want to read a quote from, from that particular essay because it's so appropriate. Jerry didn't tell me I was wrong for being an atheist. Of course, he didn't even know that. He didn't give me a list of every sin I had committed, yet without even knowing it, he performed the third spiritual work of mercy in a far more powerful way. He got his ego out of the way so that I could get a glimpse of the love that filled his soul. And I couldn't help but compare what I saw in my own soul to what I saw in his. Conviction by example. Admonishing by loving. We see that in our scripture readings for this morning. Even though things had gotten to the point where there was no way of repairing the breach between the Lord and Israel, Judah, the kingdom of Judah in particular, even though things had gotten to the point that there was no way to repair except by the Lord sending them off to Babylon and letting them stay there in a prolonged time out for about 70 years, even though there was that punishment, there was also the mercy of the Lord. He wanted Jerusalem and Judah to have the Sabbath days that it had missed because the people were not honoring God. 
and he wanted to readjust the thinking of his people to make them long for the promised land, to make them long for the temple, to make them long to worship him in the way that he had wanted them to worship him. And so he raises up Cyrus, king of Persia. And Cyrus, just as, as, as he comes to the throne, as, as, he, as he is taking over, says, the Lord has told me that he wants a temple rebuilt in Judah. And, and so the Lord uses this, this non-Hebrew, this non-Israelite, this non-Jew, to send his chosen people back to Israel, to Judah, to Jerusalem, to repair the walls and to raise up another temple and, and hopefully a restored and right relationship with God. Daniel Burke, in his essay for last week, and I just love this quote, says that love builds a bridge over which truth can pass. If you build that bridge of love in the way you give of yourself to others and in the way that you communicate the truth, you will find profound and consistent success in leading hearts to God. God sets the example. He creates a highway in the desert for his chosen people to return to Judah and to Jerusalem. He, he builds that bridge of love for his chosen people. And he extends that bridge to each of us. He brings us over the bridge of his mercy, uh, a bridge named Jesus. He brings us over that bridge to be drawing us to himself. Paul talks this morning about understanding where we have come from. Where we need to go and how we get there. He says, and you were dead in the trespasses and sins in which you once walked, following the course of this world, following the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience, among whom we li all lived once in the passions pardon me, of our flesh, carrying out the desires of the body and the mind, and were by nature children of wrath like the rest of mankind. What kind of puffed up pride can we have? None. Paul is asking us to remember where we were before the bridge of God's mercy. Why is he asking us to remember that? He's asking us to remember that because if we don't know where we have come from, we cannot minister to those who sit where we once were. It's that simple. And so I want to just share briefly three things that admonishing the sinner requires of us. Number one, that we know, acknowledge, and confess our own sins. That is so absolutely necessary. It is so profound. It is so liberating to know who we are apart from Jesus, to know who we would have become apart from his grace, to understand that, that apart from him, there was no hope for us. To see what we have left and to know the gratitude in the face of God's mercy and forgiveness. And then, we need to have a vital experience of God's mercy and forgiveness in our own lives. And I realized, as I was about to raise my hand and wag my finger and point it, that I was missing something in my life. And it comes and it goes, it ebbs and it flows. 
The remembrance of God's mercy and forgiveness in our lives needs to always be at the forefront of who we are. Without that, when we raise our finger and point, we are condemning, we are not helping. We are not offering God's mercy and forgiveness, we are offering the condemnation of the enemy of our souls. When we are reminded how much forgiveness and mercy we have experienced, it changes the way we speak, it changes the way we think, it changes the way we approach people, it changes the way we approach ourselves, and it changes the way we approach the Lord. There is a humility, a lack of pride and arrogance that comes out in us when we remember that experience, that profound experience of God's forgiveness in our lives. And then finally, if we are going to admonish the sinner, we must view the sinner with compassion, seeing ourselves in their story. Their sin may not be the same as what we struggle with. Their story may be very different than ours, but their humanity and their need of forgiveness is exactly the same as ours. And so we can look at them and we can say, their but for the grace of God go I. Apart from God's grace and forgiveness and mercy, I would be in that same predicament. So we need to be able to look at them and see ourselves. And not only that, but as we see ourselves, see how God graciously dealt with us. And then graciously deal with them in the same way. So the finger pointing goes away. And the honest confession comes out. And, and, and the relationship between us and whoever it is that we're trying to help changes radically because then we, we join them on the mourner's bench. We sit down with them rather than looking down on them. And as we do that, the Holy Spirit begins to work in ways that we cannot even begin to imagine. Transformation. The volunteers at the prison, every time we gather for training, what I hear from them is the same thing year after year after year. And it's such a good thing. They talk about their experience of ministering to inmates, men who have done really bad things, really bad things. They talk about their experience of ministering to them as being a blessing to them. That's what it means to admonish a sinner in Christ. To see who we once were, how good God is, and how much alike we are to that sinner. And that the only difference between us and them is the realization of God's mercy. So yes, admonishing the sinner not only changes the sinner, it changes us. It fills us. We need more of that transformation in our lives and those who are out there beyond these walls who don't yet know Jesus, who are living the life we may have once lived, we all need that transformation. Let's pray. Father, thank you for bringing the good news into our hearts this morning. The good news that you have redeemed us, that you have blessed us, 
and that we are blessed in order that we might be a blessing. Humble our spirits, Father. Remind us who we once were. And show us who we are in you now. Use us to come alongside those who need that same love and forgiveness. We ask this in Jesus' name.